Spotify is not a gambling company, but it sure likes making bold bets. The company is on a mission to conquer the world of podcasts because music just won't make a profit for them and has made headlines for the eye-popping, multi-million dollar deals it's made with the biggest celebrities. Kim Kardashian, the Obamas, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle are just some of the big names the music streaming giant has signed. The hope was that if Spotify had the exclusive rights to produce their shows, it would lure in more paying customers. I'm Megan, and this is Archetypes, my podcast about the labels and tropes that try to hold women back. In recent years, Spotify also gobbled up many of its competitors, studios like Anchor, Parcast, and Gimlet Media. The billion dollar bet was an all-in attempt for Spotify to dominate this new frontier of audio entertainment. So Spotify, it's now been confirmed, bought uh, the Gimlet Network, the company bets that over the next few years, over 20% of its entire listening audience will be non-music. But, as the saying goes, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Despite signing the stars and up and acquiring studios, Spotify's big bet has yet to pay off. In fact, the company, founded over 15 years ago in 2006, may be drowning in its own ambition. You saw Spotify this morning slowing. I mean, everyone is, is worried not because of where we are right now, but I think that lack of visibility has really changed people's perspective. And they're starting to cut projects that are not critical. Most of its podcast ventures remain far from profitable, according to insiders who recently spoke to reporters from the Wall Street Journal. And now, the company is being forced to take drastic measures to stem the losses. This is the story of the sinking ship that is Spotify. To understand what led us here, we go back to 2006, when Daniel Ek and Martin Lorenzon founded the company in Sweden. Yes, the land of Volvo, Ikea, and ABBA. According to Daniel, the company's name was initially a mistake. The co-founders were sitting in his Stockholm apartment trying to think of a catchy name for their new music streaming startup idea. After tossing around a few ideas, Martin shouted one out and Daniel misheard what he said. What Daniel heard wrong was Spotify. After a quick Google search to ensure the domain name was available, Spotify stuck. Daniel and Martin's original goal was to create a platform that would make music accessible to everyone, easily and legally. At the time, illegal music downloads were rampant. The music industry was bleeding cash and ultimately artists were suffering. So the source of revenue became ads. The first Spotify listeners were in Europe. They could sign up for free as long as the streamed music had commercials between songs. Users flocked to the site and registrations surged beyond control. To get a handle on the tidal wave of excitement, for some time the company was forced to halt new signups. Spotify made its grand entrance in the US in July 2011. Again, an ad-supported trial allowed new listeners to access unlimited music for free for a few months. It was a game changer and it appeared Spotify was on the up and up. This morning, the world's largest music streaming site is going public on the New York Stock Exchange. The company went public in 2018, opening at more than $165 a share for a total company value of around 30 billion. The company's skyrocketing valuation was in parallel to the growing appetite for podcasts. Everyone was wondering, could these new audio shows replace traditional radio, TV, even films? This is that podcast. We have a new podcast. And we have a new podcast. Very first podcast. Influencers, celebrities, journalists, random friends of yours. Everyone has a podcast. Spotify plans to spend $500 million on podcast-related acquisitions this year alone. Spotify set its sights on podcasting after executives noticed a spike in demand for audiobooks and podcasts in Germany. It wasn't long before other major media conglomerates started shows. And of course, the tech giants, Google and Apple, had their own ventures, ready and willing to take a hearty bite into the multi-billion dollar ad spend expected to grow around podcasts. And we'll do. Oh, you got Apple Music. Apple Music's dope. Who uses Apple Music? Spotify was the early front runner, but all the competition began to eat into Spotify's hold on the estimated 424 million podcast listeners worldwide. Hey everyone, I just want to talk to you real quick about something I've been working on lately. Spotify executives determined spending was the best way to stay ahead, but a good return on investment comes from investing the right amount 
and it's clear that Spotify, overspent, on big productions involving Kim Kardashian, Did you do this? I could never commit a crime like this. Never. And one deal with top podcaster Joe Rogan was reported to have been worth $200 million. Though at the same time these mega contracts were being signed, the consumer was being flooded with various shows across streaming platforms. The market was getting so crowded it was difficult for Spotify to break new hits. Spotify execs were disappointed to learn the exclusive format was not drawing subscribers away from its rivals, and as costs skyrocketed by millions of dollars, the revenue just wasn't coming in. Spotify, 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 they are, this is a purge, they're slashing 200 jobs. With pressure from investors, Spotify began trimming its workforce in June, laying off employees and streamlining its podcast offerings, focusing on a more limited selection of content. It wasn't just the company's workforce that felt the pain. In July, Spotify raised the price of core subscriptions to $10.99 per month. The entire sector is so dependent on advertising and, you know, in many cases, subscriber growth. And both of those things are more challenging in a tougher economy. For an outsider looking in, Spotify's overall management of its cash is puzzling. The company reports billions of dollars in revenue each year, but is spending so much it is bleeding quarter after quarter. Can this sinking ship be steered to safety? Spotify recently agreed to a deal with comedian Trevor Noah that allows the company to collect revenue from the podcast to cover its investment. I think they're trying to be very strategic about the types of deals that they choose to invest in. But there's been some real bumps lately, including a highly publicized parting with Harry and Meghan's podcast company. New reports could shed some light on the breakup of uh, Spotify and the Duchess of Sussex and her husband, Prince Harry. The New York Post is suggesting that Meghan Markle faked some podcast interviews for Archetypes, her Archetypes podcast. There are reports that the interviews were actually conducted by Markle's staff and her voice asking the questions was then added a bit later. If you hear it from Daniel Eck, all is well and Spotify's floundering podcast business will be profitable in 2024. He's even boasted that Spotify is on target to become the world's largest audio company, spanning audiobooks, education, sports, and news, generating an estimated 100 billion in revenue by 2030. With millions of users across the globe, Spotify certainly has the potential to reach its goal. The question is, will the music and podcasts keep playing, or will poor investments and competitors sink the Spotify ship? Only time will tell. Based on their current track record, it's not looking good, but let's hope things will change. We put a lot of research and time into our work here at the studio. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new content.